The stage is set for the Canadian Premier League's elite to meet once again. Forge and Cavalry combined for 108 points and 96 goals through the regular season. But all that matters now is these next two games starting today at Tim Hortons Field and the right to be named Canadian Premier League champion. All right, gentlemen, listen up. Step out onto the pitch in the next five minutes and about 100 minutes from now. We've taken care of business today. We've put in a performance that's indicative of who we are, a performance that's in our DNA. We perform, we execute, we show our habits, and everything today is about winning. Come on, on three. Oh, 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 One, two, three, yes! Win! Come on, boys. Yeah, fans are starting to file into Tim Hortons Fields for what should be a great game. The weather is perfect. 11 degrees, a slight wind. So we are comfortable here. We are live at our desk here on location at Tim Hortons Field. 10,000 fans are expected for what should be a great game, the first leg of the finals. Uh, Oliver, how excited are you for this matchup? This is the one we've been waiting for. You know, we, we've known for a while that this was going to be the finals matchup. These have been the clear best two best teams in the league and over the past couple of months we've seen them play a few times but you've always felt as if there's just been some squad rotation there's been some injured players some players held back and, and the full hand not shown uh, over the next 180 minutes we're going to get to see best against best yeah, yeah. for you Kurt I think coming into the season the people on the outside the fans soccer supporters all over the country didn't know what to expect with this league uh, but the visionaries uh, the men the ownership uh, the money behind the league four or five, six years ago, I think they envisioned this. Tim Hortons Field, like you said, 10,000 fans. They're already filing in uh, in our beautiful faces here at the One Soccer <laughs> Desk, live on location. How good is that? Yeah, and uh, in that preview, Bobby Smirniona said, listen up, and we all kind of sat up. So these coaches <laughs> definitely have uh, our attention. Should be a great game. Let's uh, hear from the commentators for this match, uh, Gareth Wheeler and John Conway. Thanks, Asa. By the way, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so we'll leave that with Kurt, but we're expecting what is a very watchable 180 minutes over two legs. Gareth Wheeler, John Conway with you. A gentleman to my left who has played and coached in a lot of these two-legged affairs. Obviously, it's a different approach knowing that it's not just today that's going to settle things. So, John, as a coach, as a player, how do you approach this? Absolutely. Listen, you can't win it in the first leg, but you can certainly you got to come out with your emotions in check, all right? There's two halves here. The first half is the first game. Second half is the second game. You get through the first half, first game, 1-1, 0-0, 1-0, and then you approach the second game however, however you need to. But importantly is to keep the emotions in check. These guys have been against, been against each other a lot this year. So, so if those emotions are, could boil up early. If there's a lot to lose... Do you expect a cautious approach by both teams here over the first leg? Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be cautious. I think they're going to go at each other. I think the the event, the whole chance of being the first champion is going to be too big. And I think the emotions are going to be loud and on display. I think the big thing is can't be foolish. No foolish fouls. Trying to make a foolish play early on in the game to put your team on, on the back foot. The other thing that's going to be completely different about today than it will be next week in Calgary is the field condition. The surface here, it's artificial. Obviously, it's going to be a slower field at Atco Field in Spruce Meadows come next week. So does that go into your game plan for this for, for sure. today? Obviously, next week, 
we have no idea what the weather is going to be like in Calgary. Right. It could be snowing, could be a mess. But as of right now, the conditions are good. The team should go out and take advantage of these conditions to get on the front foot to go into that second leg. The two best teams over the course of the regular season in the Canadian Premier League. It's match number 99 today. We're looking forward to a kickoff coming your way at the top of the clock. Asa, back to you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Gareth and John. These two teams have met uh, seven times in all competitions. This is the eighth meeting, and uh, they're dead even. Three, three, and one in those seven games. Is seven goals each, so dead even there as far as goal scoring goes as well. Should be a great matchup. Let's see how these two teams uh, stack up in these uh, as we get ready for this uh, match, and this is how close this is. This is how close these two teams are. It's so close. It, it's not just goals that are dead tied on, on seven all. You even go into something like shots, and in seven games between the two teams this season, there's only four shots between them. It's, it's ridiculously close. It is this close. It means that the tie over 180 minutes can come down to one moment of genius, one error. Um, you know, it's, it's a fantastic thought for the yeah. neutral. It's absolutely terrifying for the fans because <laughs> it's going to be so close run. Yeah, the interesting thing for me is, is these, these teams are the top two teams in the league. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, Forge finished six points behind overall in the standings. Um, but they did it in different ways. So so Calvary, maybe a little bit more blue collar, maybe relied on veterans a little bit more. They won games in a lot of different ways. Um, and Forge, you know, maybe one of the most exciting teams in the league going forward. They like to get out on the break. Uh, so fast, uh, the vision of Kyle Becker. Um, so I think, I think they won in different ways, yet they finished so close. Yeah, this game is uh, very important for both teams. The away goals rule is in effect as well. So Calvary will be looking to pick up a goal and gain an advantage there. We'll see how it all plays out. Let's hear from Calvary's head coach now. He is standing by with our Adam Jenkins. All right, thanks so much, Tommy. It's been a journey, and it seemed like it's almost inevitable that this was going to be the matchup for quite some time. Is there almost a sense of relief that the day is finally here, that all the matches in the past, the practice more or less, are done, and it's time to get going? I'd say it's more like Christmas. You've been circling on the calendar as uh, something you want to look forward to, and we got to work hard to get here, and we're just happy to be here, and we want to enjoy this occasion. What have you done differently, if anything at all, to prep prepare the guys for today, the finals versus any other match, or has it been business as usual? Uh, not much, just uh, dress them differently, I think that's it, because you can get guilty of overthinking, overdoing, changing too much. You know, we know what the best version of ourselves is, we know what the best version of them are, and it's up to us to nullify them and expose their weaknesses, and you know, we don't want to change too much. We, we've got this far doing what we do, and that's what we'll keep doing. And building off of what you and I spoke about yesterday, I asked you if we've seen Forge and Cavalry, but especially your squad at their best at 100%. You said 95%, 95% of the time. Do they have 100% of them in today? Uh, they've always got 100% in them. It's just, you know, pulling out the right time and, you know, championships bring out the best in people. And uh, I think we've got some big players that rise to the occasion. We've got a lot of players that have played in finals before, and uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, we leverage that and make sure the occasion doesn't take away from us and we just enjoy it. Well, Tommy, we're going to enjoy it as well. Best luck, and thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Adam and Tommy. It uh, should be a great game. Uh, they haven't had too much trouble scoring all season long. And one goes to the regular season. Uh, oh, what's been most impressive about uh, Cavalry's dominance, Ollie? I think it's their competitiveness and just the culture they've built under Tommy Wood and Junior. Um, you know, Tommy told us a story yesterday where in preseason they were doing their normal drills. You know, they do some fitness tests, they do some technical drills with the ball. And to, to mix things up a bit this year in preseason, they started bringing in league tables where the individual players were ranked. And the players went crazy for these league tables. So it's, it's not just against Forge where they have this competitive drive and spirit. It, it's even against each other. And, and I think that has really brought the best out of every player in this squad. Yeah, sometimes it's simple, guys. Um, I think there's no doubt that Calvary and Forge simply have the best players at every position in the league just about. Yeah. But, you know, looking more at Forge, you know, how have they been so dominant? I think it's their versatility, their ability to rotate. Um, you know, towards the end of the season, Bobby Smoda has kind of told us that uh, they already knew they were going to host this first leg. So they kind of, you know, started trying different things, maybe trying to throw Calvary off a bit. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been excellent, and uh, it's a reason that they feel so dominant in the season. It's just their ability to rest players and really not have a drop-off despite doing that. Yeah, and for Forge, uh, they've separated themselves for the rest of the pack as well, uh, falling just behind to Calvary in the table, but uh, uh, clear distance from the rest of the group. Uh, how have they dominated? 
throughout the regular season, Ollie? Well, Ford just done exactly what they set out to do and exactly what they told us they would do. I, I interviewed Kyle Becker in preseason, and he was so emphatic about the idea that if you just give Canadian players an opportunity, uh, you know, it's set out DNA like the one Bobby Smyrny Otis has, and then some time and patience and some chance to, a chance to actually execute that plan, you will get great things. And Ford yeah. have delivered on exactly that. Uh, we've got first-year pros in this team. We've got players who have struggled for minutes elsewhere coming back to Canada. And then they've just flourished under Bobby Smyrny Otis in a consistent way of playing. But how many players on Forge can we name now, can, can, can Canadian soccer fans name now, that without the Canadian Premier League, without Bobby Smyrny Otis bringing them in, we wouldn't have known. We're talking about Borges. We're talking about Crutzen, who we're shocked, you know, is not in Major League Soccer right now. We're talking about uh, uh, Anthony Novak up front, who wanted to go to the military and yeah. decided he'd give soccer one more try. So I think it's also about Bobby Smyrny Otis unearthing a lot of these young players that he knew here in Ontario and the rest of Canada were unaware of until now. Yeah, you mentioned some of the best players in the league. We'll reveal our best 11s a little later. Let's hear from uh, the Forge FC head coach. Now here is Bobby Smyrny Otis. Well, thank you very much, Bobby. Today's the big day. How has it felt in the lead up to know that after all the talk we've done, it's finally about time to get it done and just get to the field? Yeah, this is what we want to do, all of us. I think uh, coaches, management, players, uh, medical staff, they want to get the team ready and get the, prepared to play a game. You know, this is what it's all about. Uh, this is what you work for uh, the whole season, and here we are. Now, there's been some questions uh, sort of surrounding the media. Who are we going to see out there in the 11 today? How confident are you in the 11 players you've decided to pick today? Yeah, one thing we are is confident in the team we always put on the field. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of depth in the squad. We've got guys who have played considerable minutes, and uh, we've got a good lineup uh, today, just like we do every week, and uh, the guys are ready for it. And finally, just a quick word at playing at home. This is obviously the last home match of the season. What have the fans meant all year, and especially what are they going to have to bring today? Yeah, these fans are excellent. They've been number one uh, throughout the whole season. You know, they're here. They come here in numbers. They support. They're not just here just to watch a game, but they're always behind the team, and we're looking forward to the same thing today. Uh, here is going to be a great atmosphere, so it's great for us here in Hamilton. It's great for the Canadian Premier League. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. Bobby, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank Guys, you. back to you. Yeah, the fans are continuing to file in here at Tim Hortons Field. Uh, should be a great atmosphere. We'll hear from York Nine head coach Jim Brennan after a short break. This match is presented by Macron, the official technical kit partner of the Canadian Premier League. failure and success and in one second a lot of things can go through your mind choose wisely
welcome to Tim Hortons Field for our live coverage of the first leg of the finals. And we have a very special guest joining us now, uh, Jim Brennan, head coach of the uh, York Nine squad. Uh, congratulations on a good season. Uh, you really came on late in the year, but uh, you played into massive games in front of big crowds and you coached in the inaugural CPL match. Uh, what was that atmosphere like and uh, what are these players dealing with here today? There's going to be a lot of emotion that's going to be running through them right now and um, I mean look you've, you've got to play a cup final with controlled emotions today you can't let it get the better of you um, there's, there's a game plan that both of them that both teams have that they've got to stick to um, and uh, for, for me you can't you can't get carried away with it you've got to focus on this game for 90 minutes and get the result that you that you want but it's going to be a competitive match either way Jim, we've known for a while that this was going to be the finals matchup. What do you think has, has made these two teams stand out this season? And who do you give the edge? Well, we didn't know for a while, Oliver. It was only the last <laughs> four games. So, um, you know, I think they they had a good bunch of players. Um, you know, they they knew each other. Calvary, same with 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 uh, with with Forge. Um, the rest was were playing, kind of playing catch up. You know, yeah. we had a, we had a group of guys we threw together in March and um, who never played together, and, and we had to work with them. It took a lot of time. Um, I remember listening to you going, "What are these guys doing?" But you know, we've we've got to we've got to build we've got to build something. You got to implement your philosophy, your style of play. I think with us towards the end of the season, you really start to see who we were. But that's something that doesn't just come overnight. It's something that takes a little bit of time. Um, but all the teams were like that. You know, they, we it was highs and lows where they were more consistent than the rest of us. Um, and don't get me wrong, they deserve to be there. Um, I thought I thought they were fantastic throughout the season. Um, they were there when games mattered. They picked up the points. Um, and both teams, I think they're going to have a great performance here and may the best team win. Uh, Jim, I, th I think when the kind of rosters came out in preseason and, and we saw everybody down in the Dominican, we kind of pegged York 9 as a team that we thought could compete for a championship just based on the players you brought in, the experience you brought in, the talent you brought in. Um, you finished third overall, uh, upper half of the table, but, you know, York 9, or sorry, uh, Calvary forward still 30 points out in front but would you say that you guys are closer to them or to the rest of the pack right now well you'd, you'd like to say towards the end of the season that we, we were starting to get in a roll um, you know we, we beat Forge 4 nil there then we went to Winnipeg did the same we made a few changes to get some guys a game in the last game but we felt we had some good momentum coming towards the end of the season um, we didn't really peak at the right time you know it would have been a, a number of weeks beforehand I think we would have had an, a, enough momentum to, to carry us across there but you know it was it's a tough one. There's a lot of parity throughout this league. Um, you know, apart from these these two teams that kind of pulled away a little bit, but the rest of the the rest of the league, there, there is parity. I think through the off season, I think you're going to see that there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, the clubs, the you know, from from third all the way down to seventh, they've they've got their nucleus now. They've got their core players, and now it's adding a few more pieces to that puzzle to to really compete for next and, season. And I want to give you the credit you guys deserve because the series against Montreal in the Canadian Championship, you guys looked fantastic. You were on their level. Uh, some of the best football we've seen in a CPL this year, but what was it that, why was the consistency lacking that maybe we saw out of Calvary and Forge at your time? Well, if you, if you can find that answer, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's, for me, I think it was, a, it, there was a lot of guys as well. It was their first year being a professional footballer, you know, kind of that day to day, the travel in this country um, and understanding the demands of what it means to be a professional footballer week in and week out. Um, but overall, I was pleased with our squad. Um, and I think if we can just nail down that consistency, and I felt we were we were a lot more consistent towards the end, you know, in that, in that fall season. But, you know, um, next year, I think that's all of us have got to be a little bit more consistent next season. I think that will come because the longer that the players are playing together, they're around each other, they're traveling with each other, they really start to create a bond, don't they? And, and really become a team. So I think you're going to see a massive difference throughout this league next season. I think it'll be a, a, a lot harder. All right, Jim, you're at the desk now, so you're one of us. Who do you like in this game? You grabbed the results against Forge, uh, a yep. draw against Calvary as well. Who is the edge here? You know, it's it's a tough one on, on, on any given day when these two teams will beat each other. Um, you know, they're, they're competitive. They've, they've both got their style of play and their philosophies. Um, but it's a cup game. It's a cup game. If I told you this team's going to win, then I'm, I'm lying. Um, but what I really want now, I'm watching this game as a spectator and as a Canadian fan. I want, I want to see a good game of football. I want to see these guys really go out there and express themselves um, and enter all these fans that are here today. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, Jim. All the best uh, next season, and we appreciate you coming on with us. Enjoy the match. Yeah. Uh, we'll get thank you all you. set uh, for this game, and then, of course, the next week, it's in Calgary at Echo Field, leg two, the final match day of the Canadian Premier League season.
We'll take another short break when we come back. Marco Carducci is getting ready to kick off. Stay with us. This match is presented by Estrella Dam, the official import beer of the Canadian Premier League. sports in the world unites more people than football does. I think it's a great opportunity for us to bring the fans and communities across Canada together. action is by talking to the experts every week kurt larson welcome to kickoff countdown where we set up the weekend cpl action and talk about all and two guests will tell us everything we need to know about the upcoming clashes in the cpl it might not help with the nerves but at least you won't need details kickoff countdown friday on one soccer We're about 40 minutes away from kickoff here at Tim Hortons Field. The players are just getting warmed up for Forge and Cavalry for the first leg of the finals here in Hamilton. And it's time now for us to break down these uh, players in this matchup and uh, go through each position. Starting with the goalkeepers, Tristan Henry and Marco Carducci. Ollie, who has the edge between these two goalies? Well, I think it's difficult to make a case that Marco Carducci is, is not the best goalkeeper in the league. I think he's been consistent and, and outstanding all year. I just think these two keepers though really embody their teams you know Cardici's a guy who was a really highly touted prospect a Canada prospect as a teenager didn't work out for him with the Vancouver Whitecaps but now his career is going in the right direction against again with Cavalry there's a few players who you can give that description to on the Cavalry roster and Tristan Henry's a guy who had never played professional soccer and had a lot of doubters early in this season and you've just seen him grow and grow and grow and and I think he's really established himself as one of the as one of the best goalkeepers in the league yeah, and speaking to Bobby Smyrniot this yesterday one thing he mentioned was that Tristan Henry yes he's had his moments this year he's had his gaffes he's conceded a few goals he probably shouldn't but what he said is towards the end of the year he's been much better he's been safer uh, he, he said he's grown as a leader at the back and, and like Ollie said it's a first year professional uh, he's only going to get better but you have to say Marco Carducci has the yeah. edge in this matchup uh, just his experience at the MLS level and, and also you know what I like about him is his ability to grind you know he's been all over the place he's gone on loan he's gone to the foothills and the PDL just so he could be in the Calvary system ahead of the season. So his work ethic is incredible, and he's been the best goalkeeper this year in the league. Yeah, he looks like a season pro out there, rarely makes a mistake. Uh, let's move on to the defenders group now, uh, the defenders now, and uh, these defensive groups uh, uh, for Forge is Daniel Crutzen and uh, for Calvary, Dominic Zator, two great players here. Yeah, this is a really tough one in terms of who has the stronger defensive group. I think Forge's absentees, Johnny Grant, Dominic Samuel, and Bertrand Awundi, uh, maybe give Cavalry the edge, but Crutzen is, is a class. He's got so much technical quality to go with his defensive ability. And then this is a guy who was eligible for the MLS draft that used to cover Toronto FC, and I've seen a lot of players drafted by TFC who didn't really get anywhere near MLS nor look like doing so. This guy went undrafted, and, and it's an absolute mystery to me how that happened. Well, it's an absolute mystery to me how the Vancouver Whitecaps allowed Dominic Zator <laughs> to exit their system because he's been one of the best fullbacks in the league. He's also been one of the best centerbacks in the league. I'm pretty sure if Tommy Wooden Jr. put him
him a striker. He scored a hat trick tonight. <laughs> now, look, this, this guy has the Canadian as national team in his future. Yeah. He's been great all season. Uh, but Crutzen, also uh, maybe one of the best left sided players in the league. Um, both these guys might be the best center backs in the league and the best fullbacks in the league. So it's quite interesting to me. Yeah, bright future for both of them as well. Let's move on to the midfielders uh, now. And uh, this group, I think, uh, is very interesting. Both of these sides, uh, strong midfielders. Uh, let's focus in on Julian Boucher and Kyle Becker. Ollie, who do you like here? This is a, another tough one. Julian Boucher does it all. He might be the most complete midfield player in the league. He, he's brilliant on the ball. He wins the ball back more than anyone else in the league, and that possession's one stat. Uh, but Kyle Becker has so much quality, and I think the Forge group overall, maybe Bobby Smonio just has a few more options. When you look at Ali Manisise, who has so much athleticism, um, Alexander Ashinioti Jonsson is one of the best defensive midfield players in the league, and even Tristan Borges is featured in this group as well. So there's a lot of depth, and, and I think maybe a bit more dynamism and pace in, in the Forge group. Uh, Kyle Becker, for me, has changed the conversation around him. Uh, I remember, you know, remember covering him when he was at Toronto FC, when he went to the Montreal impact uh, very shy didn't like talking to the media it was me against everybody and I think he saw coming back to the league coming to you know be Forge's first signing as an opportunity to kind of change his brand to become a leader and everything we're being told is that Kyle is the leader in that locker room it's something he wasn't early in his career but not only that his play on the field has backed everything up he has the best vision in the league his his ability to, to string passes and hit diagonals is fantastic. So uh, he's completely changed the conversation around what he is. Uh, touching on that point a little bit, speaking to both coaches, uh, Tommy Wilden Jr. and Bobby Smirionis, they mentioned how that type of player, that veteran presence is important in this league for younger players to, to learn from, to learn how to be a pro. How important has he been? And that, that player, that veteran player in this uh, league, how important has that been, Kurt? H hugely important. And, and, and I think something that is often overlooked by, by, by fans on the outside is just how difficult it is to be a professional and travel, eat right, sleep right, uh, know how to get on top of all those things that just you come across in your, your daily life as a, as a professional footballer. Uh, and I think that's ultimately why we've also seen these teams emerge is because they have players who have been, you know, to the next level and have yeah. come back here to, to teach the younger players. Yeah, one of those players is uh, Dom Alunga as we focus now on the uh, forwards, uh, the attackers, uh, the exciting players uh, in this game. And uh, Anthony Novak has been a key figure for Forge FC. Uh, between these two players in particular, uh, who do you like, Ollie? Hey, you got to go with Malonga. If, if there's one guy in red who has the, the ability to win this series, not single-handedly, but have a huge influence, it's Don Malonga. I think this guy has just got so much quality and intelligence. His movement off the ball is top class, and, and he's a great example for someone like Arabin Pepple, the young cavalry striker, right. uh, to learn from. But take nothing away from Anthony Novak. That six goals and 16 game stat doesn't really tell the story no. of a player who's been in and out of the side due to injury, but his goal rate is excellent. Yeah, that board is the perfect example of how you can have two different kind of number nines and still be successful. Anthony Novak, the kind of guy who, who wants to get on the end of things in the box. He's, he likes to play with his back to goal. He grinds. He's, he, he's a handful to, to match up against if you're a center back on the opposition. While Malonga likes to be more involved in the buildup. He's, he, he's okay drifting out to the left. We might see that today. Uh, connecting passes. He can run in behind. He can turn off the dribble so I think it's an example of how two different number nines can have success at this level. Domalaga has 11 goals uh, throughout the season. Oh, one player has more than him and that brings us to our X factors uh, in this match and uh, it's it's a good matchup as well. Sergio Camargo and Tristan Borges. Uh, as far as X factors go you look at their numbers there. Who has the edge? in this game, Ollie. Borges is the MVP, so we, we, we know who, uh, who we're going to pick here. But for me, if there's one player in the league who has the same kind of ability to open up a game, um, you know, to find space, to pick that line-breaking pass, to beat a man on the dribble, to both score and create goals, if there's someone who can do that as well or nearly as well as Tristan Borges, it's Sergio Camargo. And he's not in the lineup today. Um, Tommy Wooden Jr. Ha has a specific plan for him, which, which Kurt will tell us about in a minute. But I, I think when he, if he hadn't had that mid-season injury, he would be undroppable for this match. That's kind of, um, you know, set him off course a little bit and allowed Oliver Minatel to come in, who's also an excellent player. But I think Camargo is, is a real difference maker, just as Borges is. Yeah, one thing we've noticed about Fords throughout the season, they've been fantastic, but at times they don't put teams away. You know, maybe they're good for 75, 80 minutes a, a, of games, uh, and then they seem to fade. So I think you're going to see uh, Tommy Wielden Jr. You know, go to a guy like
Cargo off the bench. Go to Jordan Brown off the bench because he thinks those guys can come on and make a difference and maybe the parts of the game that Forge has lacked quality in uh, throughout the season. Uh, the other, the final piece of this puzzle is the, the strategy that is involved in the coaches. Tommy Wheeling Jr. against Bobby Smith. Uh, who has the edge between these two coaches, these two tactical minds, Ollie? Uh, I'm going to have to sit on the fence and, and take the tie <laughs> on this one. No, they're two different coaches. Um, you know, he has, has built a team that is really physical, really intense in terms of its pressing, has plenty of quality as well, don't get me wrong, but I think Tommy really values, you know, competitiveness and culture and the things we talked about earlier. Bobby has always had this style of football that he's been determined to implement. You know, he wants to pass the ball. He wants to be dangerous on the break. He wants to get technical players um, in the middle of the field and, and, and in dangerous positions. And they've both done a terrific job, and I can't choose between them. Is, isn't this series going to determine that kind of? Because, yeah. you know, if you've met seven times throughout the season, by the end of it, you're, you will have met nine times overall in 2019. It just seems like the best coach is going to get the best out of its players and have the best game plan going into these two games you know who has analyzed the video well enough who knows the players well enough so I think this is actually going to decide who was the better coach this year yeah so let's go through the report card now you guys came to a consensus and this is uh what you came up with uh, the edge uh, goalkeeping and defending going to cavalry as well as forwards but uh, a forge getting hit from midfielders and x-factor coaches dead even couldn't pick one there <laughs> yeah. we, we nearly made it a perfect tie again just the edge to cavalry <laughs> Um, you have to look at their regular season record and, and we've listed all the statistical categories that they lead in this year. Also what they did against the Vancouver Whitecaps. I think you have to give them a slight edge in this finals, but it is so, so close. I think when we were going back and forth before the broadcast, we were kind of staring at each other and wondering what the other person was going to say yeah. <laughs> because we like both teams. We like the players all over the pitch for both teams, but I think that was the, the fairest comparison there is that uh, everything's even. I mean, one goal games have decided you know this, this series throughout the season, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens today. Yeah, it's culmination of a great year and uh, just this week I caught up with the commissioner David Klanikin ahead of the finals. All right, welcome back to a special unscripted. I'm joined by the commissioner, David Klanikin. Uh, we talked about a lot of the good from that first year, from this first year of the Canadian Premier League. What were some of the challenges in this first year? Well, I would say certainly, you know, as, as I reflect back now, one of the things that I'm talking to our team about and, and, and they're talking to me about is how do we how do we improve the fan experience mm -hmm. uh, and supporter experience in, in all, the, all the venues? And that's just, you know, you got to get better. You know, you're only as good as your last shift. We had a good year here so far, and, and I think... Uh, you know the Canadian soccer fan has been has been kind to us, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you there'll be more. Uh, they'll 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 want more next year, and they'll expect us to kick it up a notch or a few notches. So we have to do that. Certainly at the stadium level, I think you know uh, you know I, you know certainly we talk a lot about the analytics game now, which is very different than probably when you or I played yeah. it when we were younger. Uh, coaches are very different that way, and so now it's all about the style of play and how do you create more goals and more mm -hmm. chances and and what does that look like, right? So. You know, nowadays crossing is not is not is not an option. That's a, that's the last thing that, that's on the list. It's about it's about through balls and back and, and back passes and shots inside the 18-yard box at a higher percentage scoring chance. Those are the types of things. So the uh, the soccer ops people or football development people uh, at the clubs and at the league are talking about that all the time. Those are the things that we have to focus on to make the game even better. From an entertainment aspect, is that absolutely. What you're Absolutely, because that's the, the the entertainment is the fast pace, the scoring chances, the great saves, but also the great goals as well. Uh, We've you know, seen some of that too. We have, we have <coughs> seen some great ones. Uh, you mentioned the fan experience. Halifax has to be the model when you, when you're looking at that. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, all our clubs do a great job, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I can remember being Pacific the very first game, and I mean, people were calling my name out of the crowd, and I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> Your hair is purple. I don't know anyone with purple hair, right? That type of thing. But a lot of fun. Uh, but but when you go when you go see a game in Halifax, you see, you see how the HFX Wanderers have been. In, the, the community has wrapped their arms around them, mm -hmm. and it's not uncommon to be walking down the street there and listening to people discuss a football game from the Saturday before. Mm -hmm. you, you never would see that or hear that in Canada yeah. in the past. I didn't, and so to see that happen, and it starts with the mayor, and it starts with the club, and it starts with Derek Martin, who runs the club, and the coaches like Stephen Hart and the players, and the players engaged. The last game I was there, I, the, the, the supporters asked me to go and stand in the kitchen with them. And so I'm standing up there, and it was unbelievable. The, like kitchen, the, party. Outdoor, yeah, the kitchen party? The kitchen party, where they can get an entire stadium to stand up and sing. Okay. 
Yeah. And then and I watched two of the players who weren't dressed that day come up into the kitchen to say hello, and they stood for 30 minutes signing jerseys and shirts and coats and hats and yeah. faces and and uh, and the and the and the supporters just loved it. Right. That's yeah. the that's the level of entertainment and engagement that you, you want. Know, it, it looks great. Uh, one of the issues though that they've had Halifax in particular, but uh, in speaking to players from around the league, uh, schedule travel um, is that something that you've considered uh, readdressing? in the no offseason. Right now, we're actually working on next year's schedule. We've started already. And one of the things, obviously, is in, in, in our country, uh, the shoulder months, you know, uh, April and October are very tough, let's yeah. be honest. And so people love the weekends in those in those seasons, but midweek is not very, is, is tough, right? And so we, right. we have Canadian Championship games, but we've got to find ways to, to not necessarily have as many games during the week. One, mm -hmm. it's hard on the players. Two, it's very hard on the supporters. And uh, so we're, we're working through that, and and it, it's doable. We just, you know, we learn in your first year, and but we're certainly, and we're listening to the fans. They're telling us that, mm -hmm. and the players, yeah, and the clubs. Have you received uh, feedback, fair feedback from sure. uh, the teams and players? For sure, they are. You know, I mean, listen, you go on a, you know, I remember uh, the Wanderers on a 17-day road trip, yeah. right, right at the time when they were playing uh, against the Ottawa Fury in the Canadian Championships. You know, they they play, they played a lot of football yeah. in a short period of time, and that's happened on a couple of different uh, with a couple of different teams. But but we'll 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 figure that out. We'll work it through, and you 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 learn. And as long as you get better in the following uh, following year, then you're you're doing okay. When the finals of the inaugural season of the CPL would mean everything. The first in Canada and we want to be the first team to win in Canada we want to do it for our fans our family and you know this great club to be a part of that would be fantastic and and I was talking about it today any chance you get to play in the finals is a special moment and um, to do that in in my home nation in the inaugural season would be even special I think our, our fans since day one have been fantastic they've shown up rain or shine they've made noise they've had our back since day one and, and it's been fantastic here uh, play games at Tim Hortons Field. We've made it somewhat of a, a fortress and, and having the, the first leg of the final here in front of these amazing fans in, in the city of Hamilton is awesome. I think the rivalry between us and Calvary is, uh, has kind of you know spoken for itself. It's definitely a rivalry that started that first game and it's definitely going to be a big game uh, on Saturday. Uh, going back to the interview with uh, Commissioner Steve McLean and Canada. Unscripted, uh, that entire unscripted episode is available on One Sock on the One Soccer team. Uh, uh, and he spoke about the fan, the fan experience. And uh, last night uh, we were with the Barton Street Battalion, the supporters group for Forge FC at the End Zone Pub. And uh, they were embracing us they were great uh, they had questions for us it was a great event uh, Kurt so uh, what was that experience like for you I can tell you what else they had they had a lot of hate for Jose Escalante it was, been, <laughs> it was fantastic I think someone in the we, somehow the topic of Jose Escalante came up and the entire bar started booing it was amazing I think that shows you how engaged fans are uh, they were coming up to us afterwards shaking our hands you know telling us thanks for everything uh, that we do and we got to thank them for making a great atmosphere they're right over there behind us waving flags already that's fantastic foot soldiers in Calgary we're coming to you next weekend be there <laughs> Friday night in Calgary. What do you remember from that event, uh, Ollie? What, what stood out to you? Uh, two things, really. I, I think, firstly, the passion of the fans. I didn't really doubt it. I, I already knew it. But just, you know, as you said, they were asking questions. We had to wrap up the Q&A segment before I think we got all the questions in. And, and secondly, just some of the different backgrounds that the fans are from. You know, some from England like me, who obviously have been brought up on soccer and, and now live in Canada and have embraced this team. And, and I think wherever you're from, you know, it, soccer is popular sport in the world and, yeah. and it's a fantastic thing in Canada as a multicultural country to really bring communities together. Yeah, Tom Samuel was there too. Uh, it was great to see him out. He's uh, not in the lineup today because of suspension. Uh, David Edgar uh, will have to do a lot more uh, with that back line for Forge FC standing by now with our Adam Jenkins. And thank you very much, David. Today's the big day. We spoke yesterday briefly about what this league has meant to not just yourself, but all Canadians. But getting back to you just for a moment, how have you evaluated the journey in coming back to Canada and making this your home once again professionally? Yeah, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, living at home, being here, my family and friends coming to watch me, uh, playing in front of the it's, it's It's something special and something I dreamed of uh, as, soon as, as soon as I came back. But um, more importantly for, for these guys, 
an opportunity to be part of this inaugural it's, it's fantastic for Canadian soccer. Well, it's time to get down to business today. Leg one, what's it going to take to pull up the victory today? I think we just keep doing the right things, things we've been working on, uh, things that have worked for us. Obviously, we know what they're good at, what we're good at, so it's going to be a good game. We're looking forward to it. So are we. Get best of luck today, David. Thanks Cheers. so much for your time. You. Good Cheers. luck. Yeah, these two teams are very familiar with each other. Do you expect to see any surprises from either side, but particularly for Forge uh, for this game? I think we will see different things than we've seen in the meetings between the two teams over the past few weeks. They've clearly been holding things back. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know about any surprises. I, I think, you know, we know how both of these teams play. What we're going to see for the first time is strength lineups. And we're going to see the game plans that these two coaches think give them the best chance to win this game, which, as I said, I, I just don't think we've fully seen yet in the meetings between these two sides. It's going to be interesting to see how Calvary comes out. Uh, kind of the conversation around them all season has been the 90 minutes of hell. Uh, they like to press, they like to run, they like to create havoc and turnovers and then, uh, you know, create scoring opportunities off of that. But here they're playing a team in Forge that if you overcommit, if you let them in behind, they will hurt you. So do we see Calvary drop off a little bit, maybe try and get into the second leg with a goalless or a 1-1? Uh, we'll see what Calvary does. We'll see if they change their identity in this first leg. How aggressive do you think Forge will be, especially in the first 15 minutes, Kurt? I think Forge has to be aggressive because I think they're in real danger of losing this championship if they don't take a lead back to Spruce Meadows. And I think it has everything to do with the pitch conditions at Spruce Meadows right now. There's a little bit of concern over that. The pitch is going to be smaller. Uh, it was frozen just a few weeks ago when Forge went there. I think they have to take a lead back there because they're not going to be able to play the way they want to play at Spruce Meadows. Uh, and I think Forge believes they can be aggressive at this stadium as well. You know, they, they believe that they have more pace in their team, particularly in midfields, uh, and they can get behind Boucher and Ledgerwood and maybe stretch them a little bit. Um, so, yeah, they, they have to be aggressive. And as Kurt said, you, you don't know what the conditions are going to be like in, in Calgary but we do know that whatever the conditions are like, they struggle in Calgary. And, and so this match, you know, they, they have to try and take the initiative. All right, we'll turn our attention now to Cavalry and our Adam Jenkins caught up with goalkeeper Marco Carducci. And thank you very much, Marco. The day has finally arrived. It's been a long journey for you guys, but does it feel good that it's just about time to stop all the talk and just get on the pitch and get it done? Exactly. Uh, we've had this uh, day marked on the calendar for quite a while now. Obviously, we booked our spot back in the spring season, but you know what, uh, we're finally here. It's uh, exciting to see everything kind of come into place and we're ready to get it going. It's been a fantastic year for both the club and for you personally. Have you had a chance to sit back and reflect it all on the season and, and what it has all meant both for club and for you personally? It's been a special year for sure, but uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. So I think uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I'll have more of a chance to sit back and, and kind of think about this year and what it's meant for me and the team and the league and you know the sport in general in this country but uh, yeah you know it's been one step at a time all year long and we've got another step coming up right now. And finally you've seen these guys time and time again there's not many secrets left so what's it going to take today to come up with a win? Yeah you said it right I think we, we know each other quite well uh, we've done our research I think both teams will show uh, something different if possible but obviously we've seen them a bunch this year and we know what to expect it's just going to come down to uh, the two legs and uh, you know it's, it's cliche to say who wants it more I think we both want to win obviously uh, but at the end of the day I think our uh, our team and we've done all year has given us success and we'll rely on that. Well I know I speak for a lot of the fans when I say that we are ready for this one we could watch you guys play all year congratulations and best of luck today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys back to you. All right, uh, Ollie, how much does this favor Calvary, the fact that they uh, play the first leg here at Tim Hortons Field and then go back to Calvary for the second leg, knowing that they like to play a little defensive and catch a team on the counter? Yeah, I, I do think that, that it does favor them. I, I think this Cavalry team, you're going to see them probably want this game to be close in the first leg. They're not going to try and win it here. Um, and I think the team selection feeds into that a little bit. You, Oliver Minotau and Dominic Malonga are going to battle up front. They're going to make their presence felt. And then as Kurt touched upon earlier in the show, they've got two p players with real pace and energy to bring off the bench in, in Sergio Camargo and, and Jordan Brown. And, and I think they're going to unleash them late on in this game. I wonder uh, how... Sorry, go sorry. I, w I wonder how much big game experience is going to, you know, play a part in the CPL finals. Um, yes, you know, Forge did play in Concacaf League. It's it's Calvary that that played Vancouver in, in the Canadian Championship. They played Montreal. They got a result at BC Place. They have players in uh, Ledgerwood, Boucher, Trafford, Malonga, who have been in these kind of environments, these big games in front of crowds like this. I wonder how much big game experience is going to help uh, Calvary. And, and it 
uh, last year as well. Uh, not Cavalry, but Tommy Wooden Jr. and his Calgary Foothills, Foothills players. Yeah. They're playing in back to back finals, um, so that they absolutely do have some uh, plenty of big game experience. Yeah, and Wilden's mentioned as well he's got some seasoned veterans on the squad that have played in big games all right uh, this is the first leg leg two coming up next week in calgary at atco field this should be a great one there we'll be live on location for that one as well and we caught up with the coaches ahead of this big finals here's tommy wilden jr and bobby smirniotis yeah coming into the season i thought the the group we put together was a group that was uh, ready to compete and compete for a championship Hard to say at the beginning, right? Because you don't know all the other teams. You don't know exactly what they're bringing to the table, but you're confident in the players that you picked. And that's the one thing I told uh, all of the players that they're here uh, basically under my choice. They weren't players that were handed to me. I didn't uh, get them coming into this organization, but they were picked for, for a reason. They were picked for a reason to build a culture in this club and ultimately to get to a championship game. And uh, that's where we are a few months later. We had a great preseason. You know, uh, I think we were undefeated even in there. And uh, I think what that did was created a great spirit. Uh, we're very big on the values that we want to create. Every training session meant something. Every session had a purpose, uh, whether it was recovery or intensity. Um, and I think even within about the third or fourth week, we actually had a, a week of games where every game was recorded and there was a league table up there. So suddenly, right now, players could see if they were top of the sprints or bottom of the uh, mini game series and it started making this great competitive environment and you see that with the way we play now we we're, we're very fierce in, in how we win games and we win them in different ways we can win it with total football and have it, or win it with set plays we can win it with you know one goal games and I think when you look at the spring season we won a lot of close games early that then just gave us the momentum to build off of I thought just looking at the teams I thought we were very well organized I think Cavalry was very well organized so we had a good starting point of where we needed to be and uh, I guess that gap started opening up a little bit more in the in the fall season um, but I think uh, when you look through the whole season I think there, there's a lot of good quality football all around and yeah there's always going to be in year one uh, one or two teams that uh, maybe have a have a jump start or get ahead of the ball and uh, a lot of it deals with confidence a lot of deal deals with the players buying into a system buying into philosophy and also coaches knowing their players I think what we've done is been the most consistent I think you know it's not just the core that we had it's how we've adapted to travel like teams have suffered when they've gone on the road whereas we have become road warriors um, I mean we only lost three league games really in, in almost 30 games and that's huge so I think we just become a really good group. Um, I looked at all the other groups as they're signing players. Go, Poor, that's, he's a good player. Oh, he's good. You know, it'd be good on our side. And, and you look at them, and when you see them down in the Dominican, you see they got nice pieces. I mean, we were fortunate enough to play York Nine. I thought out, out the bat, you know, we had them first game. I haven't had two games in Dominican. So, you know, Jimmy's obviously a solid, solid guy. Great coach. Great history in the Canadian game. We thought that'd be good. You know, Edmonton are signing a lot of their ex-players that have more history than we've ever had, and. We thought they'd be tough, so you know, and we know with Gailey, Gailey's a good coach, and he's you know tapping into his resources with the Canada U20 program that he had, and bringing through all these emerging stars, and you know, uh, it, it is a bit of a surprise. Um, but I knew we'd be there competing, but not at this distance. All right, uh, not much separating. Teams 3-3-1 three, three, and one in the seven games prior to this, seven goals apiece. Let's look back on some of the best moments when Forge would catch Cavalry.
the spring season title, but Forge forces another chapter to be written. Chills. If that doesn't get you hyped for this finals, I don't know what will. Uh, Oliver, what was your favorite moment uh, between these two teams? Well, uh, on behalf of One Soccer, you know, we don't want to condone any violence, <laughs> but I have to pick the brawl. Uh, I think that was the, the, the defining moment of, of this series. Um, you know, when you see these play against each other and a rivalry emerge, I think that's when you see the true personalities of the players really come out in some ways. You know, you see them, you know, at their most honest. And we saw Dominique Malonga have that kind of arrogance to him, you know, that swagger that's become his trademark. We saw Tristan Borges. OK, we know he's a great player, but in that series, we saw him play with an edge and with some real grit. Yeah. Um, and, and we saw Copa Squatty, you know, the guy never say, says die. Uh, he has an unbelievable capacity to keep going, to play nearly every game for Cavalry and to come up with big moments you at the right time. You just named every moment. <laughs> just give us your favorite moment. My yeah. favorite moment was the brawl. <laughs> the brawl, you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, the one, the one you mentioned last, you, you mentioned the brawl as the defining moment, but the moment that kicked it all off was the Pasquati moment right here in this goal in the pouring rain. And if you don't remember, there was so much controversy after that one because Bobby Smirniotis was upset with where the had actually happened along the touchline. He actually got suspended for a few games after that, I think, for talking back uh, uh, about the referees. But Pasquati, how much it meant to him. It was kind of his coming out party as well because he didn't really have a role to start the season. All of a sudden, Tommy Wilden Jr. turns to Nico Pasquati, and he's been out there ever since. I'm going to have to agree with you on this one, Kurt. It's a rare occasion. But uh, <laughs> that was the day for me that, uh, you know, I noticed Nico Pasquati because he was the long throw guy. He was dynamic on the wing. And then he gave you that moment. And I think special players will give you that moment in a big game. And he showed up in a big way. Uh, that was the, the day that the, the legend of Nico Pasquati. Uh, was written. Wasn't it? Wasn't it also kind of the first exciting big moment uh, for the CPL in terms of you know late game drama, uh, late game heroics? And, and, and you're right. I think ever since that time we've kind of zeroed in on Nico Pasquati as not just a talented player in this league, but kind of a personality in the league. Yeah, yeah I think so. And uh, you know we we have rivalries in this league and in, in regions. You know we have the El Clasico, we have the 905 derby. But as I've, I've said this all season, there's nothing better than an organic rivalry that really emerges between two good teams who don't like each other and you know the, the schedule of the Canadian Premier League has been unique in that we're going to have seen these teams played each other nine times by the end of the season yeah. you know in, in the European League that it takes three or four seasons for that yeah. to happen so it's, I'll it's, watch them 15 it's, times <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly yeah. who's upset that we're seeing them play nine times Absolutely no, we've not. been waiting for this for a long time and uh, you mentioned their meetings uh, prior uh, they had uh, a few really good games in the last uh, in the last year and uh, if you ever wondered what goes on in in the locker room ahead of a matchup between Cavalry and Forge FC. Well, listen in now. We took our cameras and microphones into the locker room ahead of a big game. They might play in different formation. They might throw a curveball at us. What we have to do is just see what they're lining up and then just play our game accordingly. All that changes really is our defensive footprint. Okay, so that will adjust from the sidelines. Let's win it in their backyard and send a massive psychological message to them before we meet them again in the finals. Lads, 
the season, we've done all of our talking on the pitch. Today is another opportunity to go out and prove to everyone in the league that no matter what's said about us, no matter what anybody says, because they talk about we take our foot off the pedal. We go out today, we perform, we execute, we show our habits, and everything today is about winning. Come on, on three. Come on, boys. One, two, three. Yes. Come on. Congratulations, boys. All right, gentlemen, listen up. You step out onto the pitch in the next five minutes. And about 100 minutes from now, we've taken care of business today. We put in an entertaining performance, a performance that's indicative of who we are, a performance that's in our DNA, which is to get out there and play some smart football. Play smart football, up tempo, communicate. Today, you look to your right, you look to your left, you look in front of you, you look behind you, and you fight for every guy that's around you that's wearing our badge. Today we play our last regular season game here on our home field, and we don't lose here. This is home for us. This is our fortress. This is where we take care of business, not only on game days, but on every day on training day. So we go out there with pride, and we make sure we take care of business today. We set the tone for next week. Let's go out there and let's get it done, guys. Come on. That was ahead of the last time these two teams met. Uh, Forge uh, picking up the victory in that game. Uh, they hope to do the same uh, again today. Uh, what did you notice from, uh, from that clip? I thought it was a great insight into how these two teams have just kind of set their standards. And, you know, we've, we've had a lot of teams in this league, as we said, with first year pro year managers in some cases and it's been a learning experience what these two teams have done really well is is to keep those standards high and consistent all season long and that happens in different ways everyone looks at the manager and of course the manager is important but you saw elijah adekubi there giving the team talk uh, nick ledgerwood is another key figure for cavalry in terms of leadership carl becker david edgar was brought in mid-season for exactly that reason for forge and and those players have, play a really important role in showing the younger guys the way and, and showing them the standards that are required yeah, and you wonder you know what is being said in the locker rooms right now with, with the teams about to come out of the tunnel here in the next five to ten minutes um, you know how do you stay calm how do you keep your players calm while all also motivating them. Um, I think you remind them of uh, everything it took to get here, starting with preseason in the, in the Dominican to uh, the spring season, the fall season. Remind them of the past meetings between these two teams. Remind them to trust themselves, uh, to stay calm, but to, but to be intense. Because I think for a lot of these players, it, it's the biggest match of their lives so far. What, what the coaches have been saying all week with, with that being is that you want to keep things the same as much as possible you know you want it to be just another game and obviously there is that little bit extra and you do feel that but you don't want to get too passionate and too carried away and, and abandon your game plan you know and, and so i think there will be a very consistent message and i think there's been a concerted effort for the managers to make training just like it is every week and, and keep their players in that comfort zone all right for more on this matchup let's hear from our sideline reporter here is adam jenkins it's not quite the same as when you're in a stadium well 182 days ago that Canada said hello to its newest professional sports league, the Canadian Premier League. And it was right here at Tim Hortons Field where the festivities officially got underway. Now with the fall and spring seasons in the books, we're down to two clubs. And who else would it be? Forge and Cavalry vying for the league's inaugural title unveiled yesterday, the North Star Shield. It is two rosters comprised of the best attackers, midfielders, and goalkeepers in the country, and two clubs that have seen a lot of each other. Seven previous meetings, it will be nine by the time the next Saturday is said and done. But what was interesting is when we asked the players yesterday about a rivalry, they said, what rivalry? There's no bad blood. Well, you might beg to differ at home, and I might seem to remember a certain incident where things got a little bit heated at the end of the match. Again, right here at Tim Hortons Field. We're sure to see some hot play today, some fantastic attacking, defending, and one of the best goalkeepers in the country, and Marco Carducci. It's leg one of the CPL finals, and it gets underway shortly right here from Tim Hortons Field. Thanks so much, Adam. Yeah, we're moments away from kickoff. Uh, time for our Volkswagen keys to the match. Uh, Kurtz, what's your key to this game? Yeah, I'm looking at some of the, the, the players at the back who, who maybe don't have the, the experience in these kind of moments. Uh, Joel Waterman comes in at center back. It's going to be interesting to see how he does replacing Jay Wielden. For Forge, you have Frano moving to fullback in place of Johnny Grant. He needs to have a big performance wide left against Escalante. For me, this match will be won and lost and maybe the top wide areas we know cavalry that's where cavalry likes to attack they get their wingers high they get their fullbacks up to join them they get guys like boucher into the channels to create overloads we've 
seen Forge turn that against Cavalry a little bit in the past couple of meetings between these two sides and counter-attack very effectively down the channels themselves. So whoever can win that battle, uh, I think, uh, will have a very good chance of winning the game. All right, I'm happy to say that uh, we won't be doing our pundits' predictions for this <laughs> one, thankfully. We'll send you to the booth uh, for this one. It's Gareth Wheeler, John Conway with the call. Enjoy. Forever first. It's been a season full of them. First game, first goal, first win. And today, the first leg of the inaugural Canadian Premier League Finals. A chance to write a script to a Canadian soccer story that will forever be told. The introduction of a new top flight. Canadian Soccer League has been a long time coming. And the two best out of the gate, start to finish, meet face to face, going toe to toe for the eighth time today. A chance to put themselves in position to win a trophy, win a national championship, and capture the imagination of this country. Get ready for it, Canada. 180 plus minutes over the next week of passion, of ups and downs, twists and turns, as legends are made as the battles are won. Welcome to Hamilton, Ontario. It's Forge from the Steel City about to show their medal against Cavalry from Calgary. The front runner, the pole setter, the class of the Canadian Premier League. The fireworks are going off and we expect plenty more over the next 90 minutes plus here on a picture perfect fall day in the Golden Horseshoe area. The two sides have made their way onto the field, and we're gonna send you pitch side for today's Canadian National Anthem. Soccer fans, we now ask that you please rise, remove your hats, and join Hamilton's own Katrina Almeida in the singing of O Canada. wins five draws six losses over the course of the Canadian Premier League season it's a 4-3-3 for Bobby Smirniotis today without three first choice defenders today through suspended injury a woundy Samuel are out 
out. Grant through injury as well. So it's going to be Giuliano Frano moving back to right back. Look out for Tristan Orgis, the 20-year-old from Toronto. The most goals and assists in the Canadian Premier League on the regular season. For Tommy Wielden Jr.'s Cavalry side, as good as they get. 19 wins, 5 draws, and 4 losses. The most goals for with 51. The fewest goals against with 19. Today, a couple decisions for Tommy Wilden Jr. to make. One of them, Oliver Minitel, preferred and gets a start number 10 roll ahead of Sergio Camargo. This team difficult to score against. They've only given up more than one goal twice over the course of 34 games. A remarkable defensive record. Your match official today is Pierre-Luc Lozier from Drummondville, Quebec, 34 years of age. Has presided over 46 professional games, started refereeing at the age of 14. He did officiate a match between these two sides. That was back on June 12th, the second leg of the Canadian Championship tie at Atco Field at Spruce Meadows. A 2-1 victory that day for Cavalry. As the two captains come together, Nick Ledgerwood, Kyle Becker, Long-time players and representatives of Canadian football from the grassroots level all the way to our national team. They'll lead their respective sides here today. It's nine degrees Celsius, it's windy, it's cool. You couldn't put pen to paper on a better conditions for late October.